Hi everyone, okay, so this is just gonna be a really quick, really rough review of the Blazar Remus lenses. I've got the set 45, 65 and the 100. I got them in PL, I got them in amber. I was order 1,513, so I'm quite early. I'm in the UK, so I didn't have any of the North American shipping issues. I haven't got time to make anything remotely good. Um, but people want to see what these lenses look like. I haven't shimmed these lenses. Um, I've done crude, rudimentary checks to see if they are sharp. They seem to be. Um, okay, so I, uh, this is the 45. I'm going to start on the 45. It's just onboard camera audio, so it might sound awful, but like I say, this is just really quick and dirty. Um, so this is the 45mm. I'm shooting on a Sony FX3. The setup will be the same for all lenses. I'm going to shoot everything wide open. Yep, everything wide open, so you can see how they perform wide open. But I'm just going to go in my house, go in my garden, shoot some lens flares, shoot some close-ups. Maybe there's a cat around I can I can shoot, and then I'm just going to dump it all in the timeline and upload it, so you can at least watch something. Um, okay, so 45 mil wide open Sony FX3. Let's go. Let's go and have a look in the kitchen first. Right, let's film the microwave. Right, sorry, I'm just messing around with my autofocus spots here. Okay, so let's go in close, see how close focus we can go. Uh, that's about it, I think. Yeah, let's do a little, little twisty movement. You can see the swimming, is it called the swimming pool effect? The distortion on the edge of the frame. If I pan quickly, you can see it a bit more on the left of the frame there. But it's not too bad, I don't mind it. I think that looks kind of nice. That's kind of filmy, kind of filmic. Okay, uh, there's some light over here. Let's try and film these shelves. I'm using the um, Mofage PL adapter and it's got the built-in ND. So I can just turn the exposure down like that. It's quite nice and useful. Okay, let's, uh, let's see how this works. Let's film some pepper on the shelf. And I think that is about as close as you can get. Yep. There we are. Uh, the codec, by the way, is um, XABC SI 25P. Okay, that's that. Plant near the window. And get some flare. Where's the sun? There it is. Just angle the blinds down a bit. There it is. That looks quite nice. I went amber instead of blue because I just thought it'd be more usable in more scenarios. I find myself doing a lot of school videos for private schools. You know, they want a certain kind of prestigious look. And I feel like if there's a great big sci-fi blue flare in it, it's just not right. But this looks nice. Let's go outside. 
excuse the mess. Okay, it's a really cold day in the UK, so I'm not going to be out here too long. Let's get the exposure about right for the clouds, so we're not burning out. Okay, where's the sun? Sun's over there. Let's just try and keep that just out of frame. film something over here. Let's just go and have a walk. Oh. The LiDAR shifting focus. What else? Oh, let's do some flare against this. There it is. down a bit actually, see how the flare changes. I'll go F8. Okay, this is F8, so we're getting a bit more starburst now off that sun. Not loads, but a little. Stop it all the way down. That is F. Is that 18 ish? Bring the exposure up a bit. Oh, yeah, that's nice. There you go, nice starburst off that. That's nice. Okay, let's go back to F2. Oof. It's cold out here. And there's an F2 flare for comparison. Okay. Join us. Right, let's just try a walking up to the house shot. Let's see how smooth we can get it with the ninja walk. Let's go for that window up there as we move in. Right, I'll go in, put the 65 on. Right, this is the 65. Again, wide open. Right, let's go and film a clock or something. Here we go. You can see the barrel distortion really prevalent on the, that's my TV, that red line across the top. Okay, let's film a plant.
this is nice as well. I think with these lenses, they're, they've obviously got character. You can see the barrel distortion, but they're, they're not kind of, they're not what I would call dirty. And they're quite kind of clean in a, I don't know, I guess in a, they've got a kind of a modern clean look, but with the character of an anamorphic lens. Let's try and get some background blur going on here with the, into the distance. I'll stop down. So I'll keep focused on this wall, but I'll let the, I'll let the background go out of focus. I'm impressed with the um, the lidar and the Ronin focus meter. Really are doing a good job. Music book. Um, what else? Some elephants. Sorry, this is the worst review ever to grace YouTube, but at least you all getting to see it. Okay, let's film this microwave again as basis for comparison. See how close I can go. That's it, just there. I think when I grade this, it'll probably just be a phantom LUT and some exposure and saturation tweaks just to keep it kind of at a level everyone knows. All right, let's go outside. This gimbal's getting heavy. Do these first. that sun. There we go. Right, I'll stop down to minimum aperture. And 
and see if we can get a starburst flare going. There we go. Very nice as well. Aperture back on F2. Mm. I cranked the exposure up there, so that's burnt. All the sky's burnt out there. You can see the chromatic aberration around the around the twigs. But then, if I bring the exposure down to where you would actually have it, so the sky's still in, not so bad. shots around here. window again. The LiDAR's just drifting off there. Let me correct that. There we go. Okay. That's the 65, I'll go and do the 100 now. This is the 100mm wide open at F28. Right, let's go and see what we can do with this. So when I was playing around with this, I've used this one the most actually, and um, obviously the distortion is less because it's more telephoto. This is the one that was supposedly more soft. I think it is slightly more soft, but I think because the background is generally blurrier, because it's a longer lens, you still get a, you get the perception of sharpness. Um, one thing I would say is that I know this is f two eight versus f two. But I'd say significantly, it, net, it lets in noticeably less light than the other two, even though it's only f2 to 28. I, I'm not sure that, that that is accurate. It is. It does seem to be quite a lot darker. trying to kind of do the vaguely similar shots so you can compare them and let's go in the kitchen again Again, I'll go in as close as I can. That's it there. I think that's 
that's close focus just there. Quite a nice image, I think, looking at the right hand side of the frame, the bark is nice, the way it kind of deals with the light and the colour, it's nice. Okay, let's go outside. And uh, like I say, I haven't shimmed these. I don't even know how to really. I've had anamorphic adapters before. But this is my first set of anamorphic lenses, so I'm not new to anamorphic, but this is my first set of proper lenses. Alright, let's find that flare. Where's it gone? There it is. Okay, I'll stop down to f. Uh, it says 22. Yeah, this does go to f22 actually. Sort my exposure out. There we go. Lovely star. Oh, and a bird. Right on cue. Right, back on F2. Uh, sorry, F28. Not F2. Actually, I'll just do that branch test again. Alright, let's overexpose the sky. My monitor's not the best, but yeah, I think you can see the fringing there. And if I drop the exposure to what it should be, less obvious. Back up. I'll do the same thing with the window. I'll try to. Sorry. Awful camera work. I'm having to look where I walk as well. Now the LiDAR is not focusing. What's going on? 
There we go. Right. Hope that was worth something to you. I'm going to go back in and stick it all on a timeline.